yourself in a good book. The Board Gosh Energy Book Club. Now, George Orwell said, or wrote, if you want to keep a secret, then you must also hide it from yourself. My next guest found herself in the primitive position of hearing long-held secrets from two important people in her life. Inspired by their stories, author Emma Hannigan decided to loosely base her ninth novel on their secrets, hoping that it would help keep some of their incredible stories alive in some small way. And Emma joins us now. Good morning to you, Emma. Good morning. A friend of the show, it's fair to say, at this stage. Absolutely. And we were having very a chat outside, um, and I said that's your ninth novel. It's your tenth book, in fact. It's my tenth book because I wrote Talk to the Headscarf as well, which was the one I wasn't allowed to make bits up in. Mm -hmm. Of so course. This, yeah, which was quite <laughs> difficult, believe me. It was. Yeah. Well, now, speaking of making bits up in, um, um, th this is based on two great confidences, two very important people in your life. One was your grandmother. Yeah. And the other is Tommy. Um, Reichenthal. Reichenthal, yes. who we've met on the programme before. He's an incredible man. He's an extraordinary man. And good morning to himself and Joyce. I know they're watching this yeah. morning, himself and his wife, yeah. So, um, so these are, I mean, yes, obviously you, you, you have to kind of fictionalise them to a certain extent, but the core of these have got to, be, got to be absolutely accurate, not just because of the people involved, but because of the importance of the secrets they told you in the first place. Mm -hmm. Absolutely. The, well, the, the beginning of it came from Oma, my maternal grandmother, who was Austrian, so we called her Oma growing up, and my children now call my mum Oma. All their friends call her Oma, in fact, as well. I think they all think it's her name. But, uh, <laughs> is, that, is that an Austrian derivation for grandma, or is it? Yeah, it's, oh, it's, right, it's okay. the German for grandmother. Okay. So, um, so when I was 21, I'm the eldest granddaughter on my mother's side, and it's a big family because uh, Oma had nine children, one of whom is my mum. And so on the morning of my 21st birthday, Oma phoned me and said, come down, I have a present for you, but it's not one that you can open. Now, Oma invented recycling before anyone else ever thought of it, let me tell you. So, <laughs> she was ahead um, of the curve. Absolutely. So her presents were always intriguing. You'd kind of think, they, she gave you things no one else would ever give you, put it that way. <laughs> and uh, she had the most incredible sense of humour. She was an amazing, amazing woman. But I went down and we knew she'd come from Austria. She had a very strong German accent that she held on to. And I know that my mum and her siblings knew that she had come to Ireland towards the end of the war and we knew that there was there was a history there but we never really knew the, the full story. So that morning she sat me down with coffee and homemade cake as, as only she could do and she told me her story and I was absolutely blown away by it. It was it was the best love story I think I've ever heard in my life. And she felt you at 21 years of age were you were ready to hear this amazing love story. Yeah, I don't know why, why she, did she chose choose me. You? Yeah. I don't know. Well, I'm the eldest granddaughter, and I don't know why she chose me. And I never knew I was going to write a book at that point. And I did say to her, "Oh my, this is amazing. I, you know, we'll have to write it down." And she said, "Someday you'll write it." And she so smiled. She knew. So she yeah. did, did, there was a prescience. Yeah, isn't it? Isn't that amazing? Like, it really is. Um, and I, certainly, I can tell you, at 21, there was no English <laughs> to write a book. So it's not as if I was one of these kids who, from the word go, said I'm going to write a book. So. What was so remarkable about about the the? Because actually, it's the love story. It's like, even though yeah. it, obviously you found out about her history and why she came and all the rest of it, but yeah. it was actually the the love story that was the important part. Wasn't the it? love story was just amazing. Um, her parents were never meant to be, basically. Her father was the son of the head of the Austrian cavalry and they lived in this beautiful house in the first quarter in Vienna and they were very privileged and educated and all the rest and there was an arranged marriage. He was to, to marry the right girl from the right family and all the rest and this little housemaid came into the house and he fell in love with her and she discovered she was pregnant and ran away because she knew that he would be denounced, she wouldn't be accepted, the child certainly wouldn't be accepted. And he spent eight years looking for her and found her and her daughter who had been basically sent to, to a family who fostered her. And that daughter was my grandmother and she remembers at the age of eight a car pulling up which was very rare then and two people saying we're actually your parents and you have to come with us, we're, oh, we're going wow. away. And she remembers that and they went to Vienna and she sat on a high stool in a coffee shop and drank a bowl of hot chocolate and they told her they'd be back in a minute. And she said that she remembers her mother looking very sad. She said she had sad eyes. And, but she, when they came back, she was jovial and came in the door. They'd gone and got married. And then they went on a, on a ship and ended up in Ireland. 
But of course, his life uh, as I mean, if he was a member of the Household Cavalry, then that life, that those doors shut. Oh, they were good. That was it. That was he it. Was, that was over he was leaving that behind. Yeah. Okay. Oh, wow. uh, Tommy Reichenthal, the, the extraordinary Tommy Reichenthal, who yeah. we've heard his story. Um, wh wh why does he play a part in this? My father and Tommy were in business together for years and years and years in Israel. Um, my father has an engineering company, Hard Metal, and they import a lot of stuff from Israel. And Tommy was working there. And for years, they, they worked together and then became friends or whatever. And Tommy never spoke about what had happened in his life. For 55 years, he told nobody that he had survived Bergen-Belsen concentration camp. And then he began to talk about it. And my father, the first time he heard him talking about it, was absolutely, he couldn't believe that this was the same man and that he'd never mentioned it. But I had the privilege then of seeing Tommy speak in UCD one time, went with my father and my uncle. And he was just, anybody who's met him will, will tell you, you know, he's got this incredible presence. He's an absolutely amazing man. And then met him afterwards with my father and he's been to our house subsequently with Joyce's wife and I've got to know him. And so he, I, I've heard him speak publicly where he tells the story in, in the most compelling and incredible way. But we've also had the privilege, or my, my teenagers sat with him recently when he came to the house. And to, they sat at his feet and were mesmerised when he was speaking. Well, you're, when you're this distance to Tommy and he's telling you the story, it takes on a whole other mm, resonance. Still, but he is, as I said in the book, the book is dedicated to, to Oma and to Tommy. And as I said in the book, as long as Tommy is alive, forgiveness will happen in the world. Evil will not prevail because mm. he is just... Oh, he's one of the most amazing people I've ever met. He's he got spends a lot of time talking to kids. He, he goes to schools yeah. all over the country, and he's still very active in doing that. In fact, at what age is he now? Um, I'm not sure, actually. He'd be in his late 70s, early 80s, possibly. Yeah. And he's still physically very active. Do you active. know why I'm not sure? Because you would never know how old he is, because no, you look in his eyes. Yeah. That's, that's all it is. He's just an incredible so how do you how, yeah. how do the two mesh or intertwine in the book? Well... Because it was the same time as, as Oma and her family came and it was all to do with the war and she was, she was Jewish and so she didn't go to a concentration camp, thankfully, um, but Tommy did and because it was the same time and I suppose Oma had this massive influence and she told me this amazing story and then when I heard Tommy's story, his big thing and why he speaks and why he talks about the Holocaust and everything is because he doesn't want anyone to ever forget. He doesn't want people to forget what happened mm -hmm. and he never wants it to happen again. So after I heard him speak the first time, I told him I had started writing this story about Oma and I told him about it and so I just said with his blessing, could I put my interpretation of what he had said in the book and which he, he said absolutely and... I know he's reading it at the moment, and I really hope I've done it justice, Tommy. I, really I, I would it. imagine you certainly have, Emma. Well, it was, I have to say, it's the most emotive book I've ever written, and I've written my own story about cancer, all of that, and I have to say I sobbed when I was writing it. I did laugh a lot as well, but I, I sobbed when I was writing it. It took a lot out of me. Mm -hmm. I think it was kind of my ancestry, and like even the, the cancer gene that I carry, the BRCA1 the BRCA1 gene, one gene yeah. the, the strain that I have is called the Ashkenazi Jewish gene. So I think it's probably part of this ancestry is, is, is going through my blood. Mm -hmm. And so it was, it was actually exhausting at points to write. Like therapy for you? Yeah. Yeah, but the message is that, you know, awful things happened and a lot of people stood idly by and watched it and we should never allow that to happen again and we should no. never forget that it happened. Mm -hmm. But equally well, you are can't be well, bitter about it forever. Emma. You're doing well. I'm great. Not only you. is this your ninth novel, but you are fighting cancer, surviving cancer, I should say, for the ninth time. I'm clear at the moment. You're clear. clear. Yeah. Isn't yeah. that fantastic? Fight over. And you so. love a picture of health. You really do. Makeup's a marvellous thing. <laughs> I know that only too well. Lovely to have you here, Emma. Cool shoes Thank as you. well, by the way. Cool we've all got cool. There's a lot yeah. of cool shoes going on here today. Fine. The secrets <laughs> that we share, the latest um, Emma Hannigan novel. It'll be another number one, as always. Thank, Thank you for having me. Thank you, you Emma. welcome. Always welcome. Thank now, uh, this month's book club choice, by the way, is Paula Hawkins, The a Girl on the Train. And if you'd like to be in with a chance of uh, winning uh, a book club goodie bag and versus tablet, then send your reviews to us by Friday, April 24th. Now, you can email them to irelandam at tv3.ie or you can post them to the Board Gosh Energy Book Club, TV3, Westgate Business Park, Ballymount, Dublin 24. Now, after the break, we'll be joined by Jenny McCarthy and our three camera club finalists who are all hoping to bag that great Fujifilm camera. She'll also be announcing the new theme for April, so stay with us. Lose yourself 
in a good book. The Board Gosh Energy Book Club.